Hey friends, I just want to give a disclaimer real quick. You may hear birds chirping. I'm real sorry. I can't get around that. But welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ken the Storyteller. And today I want to discuss a serial killer's case that hits home because it happened right in my backyard. I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. And I remember hearing about this story and one of my sisters being friends with the killer's family members. It's so sad how Terry Blair became Kansas City, Missouri's serial killer. This is why it's so important to break generational curses. This case I would discuss will leave you like, man, this family was cursed. Got to call it how I see it. No disrespect. Lord help them. He can only help them at this point. So when you're ready, friends, join me on this coaster into the world of true crime. Terry Blair was born September 16, 1961 to mother Janice Blair. Miss Blair suffered from mental illness and with only a ninth grade education, trying to raise children. Terry is the fourth eldest of 10. Terry was convicted of second degree murder in 1982 of Angela Monroe. The mother of his two children and who was pregnant at the time with their third when she was murdered. Blair served 21 years of his 25 year sentence and was released for this crime. This is why some offenders shouldn't be released from prison because of this madness. Sometimes it's best if they stay sitting in prison so they will not hurt themselves and especially others. They clearly need to be monitored. This crime will lead Blair to be known as the Kansas City, Missouri serial killer in which he murdered six victims, which were women, sentenced on March 27, 2008, with 25 years imprisonment and life imprisonment without parole, but he was apprehended in 2004. So his overall convictions, second degree murder and six counts of first degree murder. Terry Blair is housed at the Potosi Correctional Center in Missouri. Now I will insert the victims' names. So before I get into more detail about Blair's murder sprees, I have to share some of his family history which is very disturbing how this family has so much a crime within. First, Terry's mother killed her husband on August 16, 1978. I'm not sure why she done it, but she entered a plea deal of second degree murder and received five years probation if she would get counseling, therapy, treatment. Terry's brother, Walter, was convicted of capital murder and sentenced to die for the murder of Catherine Joe Allen for the 1979 crime. He was executed on July 21, 1993 at the age of 32. His sister, Juanita, and her husband at the time faced charges for the murder of James L. Bell in 1980. But I guess those charges were dropped. Her husband would later be killed by his son and Terry's nephew. Dang. Then Juanita would kill her drug dealer boyfriend because he was going to cut off her supply of crack cocaine. She would plead guilty to second degree murder and receive 10 years for this crime in 1990. Then in 1992, Terry's older brother, Clifford, abducted a woman, forced her to give him oral sex, and beat her unconscious. The victim had to spend over two months in the hospital for this crime. Clifford was convicted for forcible sodomy, assault, kidnapping, and armed criminal action. He received two life sentences plus 240 years. Dang. Friends, and the list goes on with the members of this family committing crimes. Y'all can do some research. I put the link in the description box. Now, what kicked off the hunt for Blair was a neighbor noticing two female bodies in a garage in an abandoned home and called the police. On September 3rd of 2004, Blair allegedly called the police to give detailed information about another body that could be found not too far from the ones in the garage. Then again, he called on September 4th to reveal two more bodies in their locations. He promised to call again, but that didn't happen because the news station started reporting on the cell phone Blair was using. The police eventually found more bodies in the same radius, which was near Prospect Avenue. The investigators narrowed down on Blair as a suspect because he was on parole for the murder of Miss Monroe. Not to mention, he was identified by other victims that survived his attacks. There was a witness that claimed Blair said he was going to kill the prostitutes. And if I didn't tell you guys, that's why Blair murdered his children's mother, Miss Monroe, because he thought she was being a prostitute. Blair was arrested, but not because of the murders at first, but not staying in contact with his parole officer. But on October 15, 2004, he was charged and the prosecutors told Blair they would take the death penalty off the table if he agreed to waive his rights to a jury trial. 
trial, which he agreed, but he is now denied his guilt in trying to appeal his convictions, but he is denied every time. Now, this leads to my discussion on breaking generational curses in the family bloodline. First, let me keep it all the way real. If God the Father was in this family and Jesus, things would have been very different for everyone involved. It's so important to have praying people in the family, praying against spiritual wickedness, breaking chains and doors that may have been opened to cause chaos on loved ones. I'll leave you with this scripture, 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And there are countless scriptures to break curses, John 3, 16, James 5, 16, and more. Stay aware and prayed up, friends. Thank you for tuning in today for another true crime video. Please follow me on Instagram as Ken the Storyteller and visit my business page, Thrilling Novelist. Like and subscribe to this channel, please, and send your friends. And if you want more of Ken the Storyteller, follow my podcast, Mystify. All the links will be in the description box. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.